we are almost halfway through the moon challenge. Let's stick together and finish it off. Today is day 15 of the challenge and it would be impossible to miss the moon. Luckily for me, the east was quite clear and I could click this beautiful picture which I am going to share with the hashtag moon challenge. The moon, when full, is at its brightest best. It outshines everything and also makes its way into our hearts, our minds, our fables, our traditions. I don't think there are any people amongst humankind who do not have any stories about the moon, particularly the full moon. Even the animal kingdom loves full moon and there are several cycles of life which include the cycle of the moon. If you spend some time looking at the moon on this evening, you will realize that all the stories about the old woman or the rabbit or any other shape that you see on the moon are actually the traits of a very good imagination. The dark areas and the lighter areas do give us an impression of some kind of a drawing or art which is there on the moon. It may have been clear to you for the last few days because you have been following the moon challenge, but for a general audience witnessing a full moon rising, this is a great experience. And as it climbs up in the sky, the markings become duller. Thus, the best time to see the full moon is around the evening when it is still lower on the horizon and what we call as rising. In this beautiful picture shared by Revati, who has been following the moon every day, you can see that all the features we have been enjoying, all the high mountains, all the flat plains, all the ray craters and the deep ones too, have kind of disappeared. It looks so much like a flat surface. This is because the light is direct on the moon and it is reflecting it all off without us seeing any shadows of the objects there. When people also contacted me saying the moon is looking particularly brighter today. Let us blame it on today it being a super moon. Well that is true and day 15 is seeing a phenomenon that we have popularly come to know of as the supermoon. The moon goes around the earth in an elliptical orbit, but the ellipticity of the orbit is so less that it can be called an almost circle. The earth being at one of its foci, which are very close to the center of what would be a circular orbit. The farthest that the moon goes from the earth in this elliptical orbit is about 400,000 kilometers. This is called the apogee position. At the perigee position, when it is closest to the earth, it is about 360,000 kilometers away. The difference between these two is just about 40,000 kilometers. The moon today was at about 368,000 kilometers from the earth. That takes it close to the perigee position. Of course, this changes the way things look. The moon looks slightly smaller in the sky when it is at apogee, which means that it is quite far away from us. At its closest approach, the moon seems to be slightly bigger in the sky. This comparative image will tell you that at perigee, which is close to today's position, the moon could be up to 14% bigger than how the moon is seen at the apogee position. In fact, because of this closeness and bigger size, the moon can be up to 30% brighter in the night sky compared to the smallest moon, which is called the micro moon. This particular night of the biggest and the brightest moon is called the super moon night. Maybe you can think about why the moon is about 30% brighter when it looks 14% bigger. 
Of course, so the supermoon position of our natural satellite did have some effect on the brightness as seen by people. But there are certain illusions that we also have. A rising moon can often be mistaken to be much bigger and brighter than it usually is. There is a common moon illusion spurred by the fact that we keep seeing such amazing pictures of the moon taken by people who have specialized lenses or telescopes even. Here you can see the moon as big as a tree rising on the horizon. It would definitely make you think that the moon looks much bigger when it is at the horizon. There are also such amazing images available on the net which make you doubt the scale of the moon when it is rising. These kinds of shots are also used for dramatic effect in several movies. Here you can see the moon rising behind a huge mountain in front of very tall buildings. Definitely with this perspective the moon would seem to be extremely big in size when it's rising. But we have to note that such images are taken with telephoto lenses or zoom lenses as we would call them or maybe even with telescopes. The reality is clear only when you yourself look at the moon rising. The moon is a very tiny object in the sky and it would remain so whether it's at the horizon or at the zenith. In fact, as this person seems to be doing, you could actually try to see and measure the size of the moon in the sky and convince yourself that this illusion is just an illusion. We do not see the moon any bigger whether it's rising or up there in the sky. While we were enjoying the view, Anirudh, our friend, was busy clicking pictures of the moon in high resolution. Now this is a spectacular stitch that he has generated in which you can now see the western edge of the moon. This is the first time we are looking at it in this whole challenge and now we are going to keep looking at it while the things on the eastern edge start becoming hazy or going into the shadows. In this slightly enhanced picture, you can see the clear demarcations between the darker areas with solidified lava and the lighter highlands where there have been many asteroid impacts which have made the lower surface soil or the lighter elements come up onto the surface of the moon. Tycho here dominates the face of the moon with its huge create a rays and as you can see Aristarchus with its stark contrast with the mare around it is clearly the brightest part of the moon. We have some new things visible on this edge but let us not discuss them tonight and I will leave you with a good look at the full face of the moon. We will discuss more of the west of the moon as we go ahead into the rest of the challenge. The moon is going to stay in the sky all night through and will set at dawn. So I hope to catch it again on day 16 as a remainder of the day 15 moon. Well now the confusion of your days may start until the moon starts rising past midnight. For the next week or so the moon will be setting and then again rising on the same day. I'm sure that will be fun and challenging enough to keep you with us. So hang in there and we'll be there with you for the rest of the journey of the moon challenge.